What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I want to show you guys GRSync. Now, a couple years ago, I did a video about the rsync command and I slightly touched on grsync, which is the GUI version of rsync. And basically all grsync does is run the rsync command in the background based on the criteria that you set in the GUI. It's basically a simple way of running the rsync command. And this is kind of the way I try to push people that are new to Linux to try out the GUI version of rsync because it displays a lot of the commands when running it within the GUI if you look at the logs. Now first off, what is rsync? rsync is a fast and versatile file copying tool and it allows you to synchronize files over your network or within the same computer. It, it all depends on how you use the command, but basically it's for copying files or synchronizing files on a computer. And I wanted to show you guys the easy way of using this command, which is the GUI version, which I'll go on and install now. So let's hop over to my virtual machine and get started. Okay, so today, I will be using Manjaro 21, which is a Arch based Linux distribution for the demonstration of showing you guys grsync. Now, rsync comes on most systems by default, or most Linux operating systems by default. And it's a very old command. It's been used for a number of years. It was written in the C programming language. And let me open up the terminal right fast so I can kind of show you uh rsync first and let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can kind of see and basically what i'm gonna do is go to the man page for rsync and like i said refer back to that video if you want to learn how to use rsync and but like it says it's a fast and versatile remote and local file copying tool and it's included on most Linux distributions. Now, let's go down and quit this and show you grsync. And what we have to do is install it. And like I said, this is an Arch-based Linux distribution, so I have to use the pacman command. So sudo pacman-capital S and then grsync. That's the name of the command. Like I said, it's in the main repository. You don't have to get it out the AUR or anything. And it's in the main repository for pretty much all Linux distributions. So just use the package manage, package manager included within your distribution. And you should be able to install grsync as long as you have a GUI or a desktop environment to run the application on. Now, we have it installed. And like I said, that's the command to actually install it, sudo pacman dash capital s and then g or sync and let's exit out of the terminal we don't need that anymore uh but we can find it under our applications all we have to do is i'm gonna just type g or sync and as you can see this is the gtk gui for or sync now this makes the or sync super simple to actually use because it's a it's a mini program it's not that big of a program because like i said all it's doing is running the rsync command in the background based on the criteria that you set and typically when you run it in the command line a lot of what you would just simply uh click and select here is basically the options that you will run while running the command and it's very simple to use. So first you have to select your source and all we have to do is click the open button and that'll allow us to browse. And that's why I mean, it's super simple to actually use. You don't have to type out paths and all that stuff like you would have to within the command line. And my source is actually under documents. I basically downloaded a bunch of uh, Ansible examples that I got from a repository on GitHub. So I'm gonna hit open on this directory. So I wanna copy everything in it. Well, I wanna copy this directory, Ansible examples. Uh, and I'll copy that over to a shared location, just so you guys can see some files actually transfer. And if I open up my browser right fast, I could just click on home. I already have it linked there, but this is the location. It's actually a share drive, a Samba share that I have on my network. 
and I want you guys to actually see the files go up to that location. Uh, so if I select that location, this is the de destination that I want everything to go to. So it'll put all that information in there or it'll put the path to that location there. And then there are some options, you know, you can preserve time, you can preserve permissions, preserve owner, uh, preserve group if you need to. And then also you could delete on destination. Uh, do not leave file system. That's that's not an option we want to use, but verbose, that'll actually show us the information. And if you hover over it, I just noticed that if you hover over it, it kind of gives you the options right there. So show transfer progress. Typically, when you type this in the command line, you have to type dash dash progress while writing the command out and then ignore existing. This is something that I, I typically do when I'm doing backups. I'll ignore existing files so it'll only transfer the files that are new. But if the file is already at the destination, it won't copy the new file over and make the transfer is super long and then right here it says size only i'm not sure about this one oh skip uh files that match in size so if you see the same file you know there and it has the same size then it'll skip it and then skip newer that's if you don't want it updated you know like if you have a copy of one file that was let's say edited a month ago and is edited and then you edit it more recently, like let's say this month, then it won't overwrite the old file that's there. Uh, and then Windows compatibility, that's mainly for, you know, fat file systems, you know, the limitations on that. Now, if we go over to the advanced option, I just wanna go through it and show you guys, uh, they do have some other options. And a lot of these I use while running a command via the command line like for instance compress files so basically what that'll do is compress the actual file before it transfers so it doesn't it saves on bandwidth a little bit and it says right here uh under that option it says compress file data when transferring useful only if at least one side is remote so yeah that's the benefit of it the compression will somewhat save you on bandwidth but there is a downside to it because compression, anytime you compress something, it uses a processor to actually compress it. And so you may, your hardware may uh, be running a little hard while you're compressing those files and transferring them at the same time. So just note that that could be an issue or that could cause an issue, especially if you're using older hardware while doing these transfers. Uh, it might be best to just ignore the bandwidth or if you're on the same network ignore the bandwidth because it doesn't matter and that way your processor is not processing all this stuff super hard you know what i'm saying and then right here it says preserve device i'm not sure what that one is i never used that one before only update existing files so if there's files there it'll update those existing files if it has an old date and there's a new date that you're transferring over to the server then it'll update that file to the newest version that you have on the source uh and then it says uh keep partial transfer files same as partial progress so yeah uh and then don't map uid gip yeah so that's just some other options let's see copy sim links add sim links yeah you can do that you can copy just the sim link like if you have some sim links within the file then you could copy them as sim links. But I know sometimes, you know, it'll look for the original file and copy that file over if it's a sim link. And then it says, uh, copy hard links is hard links, uh, make backups. So that's another option I've seen use. I've actually used it, you know, make backups of existing files on a destination. It says, uh, show item itemized changes list. That's if you want to see that, uh, desirable recursion. If checked, the subdirectories of the source folder will be ignored. So that will ignore subdirectories and then protect remote uh, arguments from shell expansion. So there you go. And then extra options, they do have some more. So you can execute this command before or, or sync. So let's say you have a script or something you want to run before it, or you want to run a specific command. And that's like uh, just verifying like a file system is mounted or something like that. You know, uh, just just you can run whatever type of command you want. Uh, 
you'll have to figure out what what makes sense to you and then halt on failure you can stop it when it if it fails in any way execute this man command after or sync so you do have the option to do uh execute some before and after and then on or sync error only you can uh you know run a specific command uh and that's based on those two options and then browse files instead of folders and then run as super user so you can run it as super user if you need to and that'll copy everything as root by simply using the sudo command boom so that's pretty much it let's go down and run this thing right fast so you guys can actually see it and all you have to do is uh make a full run which is right here but before i do it i want to show you guys something else this will actually test uh the command because a lot of times and that's the thing i do this all the time it's called a dry run and this is another option you can actually add in when you're running the orson command it'll basically perform a dry run using the options that you selected without actually doing anything so this is beneficial if you want to test out if the command is going to work and then also like if you playing around with delete on destination and you're not sure what's actually gonna be deleted it'll show what it will delete without actually deleting it and it'll show what is actually being synchronized or transferred without actually transferring it and let's go on and run that now so you guys can kind of see it and it'll you know give you feedback you can look at the output you know what i'm saying go through and you'll see that it's actually going to transfer each file and it breaks it all the way down you know to the lowest level a file so it's basically you know recursive so it'll it'll grab every file and copy them over one at a time so as you can see it completed successfully but we all know that this is fake you know what i'm saying this was a dry run so we didn't actually transfer anything as you can see over here if we refresh our remote server we'll see that no files are there you know what i'm saying but it completed successfully so that means it will run successfully and you like i said you can look through here like if you selected delete it or delete on delivery or something like that it'll show the files that it's going to delete after the fact you know what i'm saying without actually doing anything so let's hit close and let's go down and run it right fast so boom so it'll go through get the same output but it's actually taking time because it's actually copying the data up to that remote directory. And as you can see, it's pretty much done. Um, that actually finished. So as you can see, you know, uh, completed successfully, uh, global progress. Yeah, that's the just a bar, global process bar, progress bar right there. And this was moving each time a file was copied over. And it's super quick. Uh, we don't see any errors. And that's one cool thing about it. You'll at least see error list you know what I'm saying? You can click on it and you can see those errors that if something didn't transfer properly. Now, let's go down and close this. And as you can see, we can't see anything. And that's only because I need to refresh this directory. So if we re reload this directory, we should see that Ansible examples folder. And if we drill all the way down in, you know, these folders, you'll see everything that we had in the local folder that we transferred over so that was pretty much all i wanted to show you guys about grsync it's a very simple command that you want to learn how to use especially when you're new to getting into the linux operating system and using the linux operating system as well as learning how to manipulate files or synchronize files move files around within the command line this is a great way to learn how to actually use the rsync command now, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave comments down in the comments below. And of course, keep it techy.